just be like the main character in the book. Uh, the dick. <laughs> the main character is born Calliope. She's born a girl, and throughout the book due to genetic malfunctions because of her family's incestual habits she grows a penis which is approximately two inches long and she becomes a him. I think we should iterate that Cal and Calliope are the same character. Yeah. Okay so I got a family tree to help you understand all of the amazing incest that happens in the Stephanides family. So, let's just start off. Okay, so, Desdemona and Lefty, right, Miro, are Cal, Cal's grandparents, like it says. Um, they live, they live in Greece. Cal's grandparents, Desdemona and Lef Lefty, came from Greece, and they traveled all the way over to the United States. Um, so they live in Greece. Um, they move to America and stay with Sor Melina, which is their cousin. Um, so they're brother and sister, and Cal's grandma and grandpa. So they get married, have Milton. Sor Melina has Tessie. So Milton and Tessie are second cousins. They get married and have chapter 11, which is Calliope's brother and Calliope or Cal. Same person. Now, focus. Okay, so the first half of the book is basically just talking about Desdemona and Lefty and their lives together when they move to America, and then it talks about how Sormelina and Desdemona have their children, and then how Milton and Tessie grow up. So, starting with the second half of the book, it's all about Calliope and how she becomes Cal. Um, so, there's physical and like mental emotional things that cause her to realize who she really is and what she really is so it starts off kind of like it basically starts at her birth like their doctor Dr. Philobogian is his name um he came from Greece with Desdemona Lefty so he was basically like the family doctor he did not he had bad eyes is kind of like the whole thing throughout the book he did not recognize that Calliope had like an enlarged clitoris so like if he would have noticed they could have did surgery and she could have just been a girl but he didn't so she basically grew into a guy which is kind of odd but that's what happened and she meets um Clementine Stark who teaches her how to kiss um and then she meets the obscure object um which is literally what she's called throughout the book um they basically have sex. Basically, just to sum it up, Calliope runs away, becomes Cal. She gets her hair cut and basically goes by the name Cal. She ends up back at home, but her dad died, Milton died, and then, um, yeah. It just kind of ends like that. First thing is about metaphor. Um, there's some very good metaphor in this book, but one that I'd like to point out is um, about how Cal calls her little, little tiny dick a uh, crocus, and how it blooms like a flower off her body, sort of like that. So I'm just gonna read a short paragraph, long paragraph, it's kind of long, about it. A kind of crocus itself, just before flowering, a pink stem pushing up through dark new moss, but sh a strange kind of flower, indeed, because it seems to grow, to go through a, se a number of seasons in a single day. It has its dormant winter when it's slept underground. Five minutes later, it stirs in a private springtime. Sitting in class with a book in my lap or riding home in a carpool, I'd feel it a thaw between my legs, the soil growing moist, a rich, peaty aroma rising. And then, while I pretend to memorize 
Latin verbs, the sudden squirming life in the warmth earth beneath my skirt. To touch the crocus sometimes felt soft and slippery, like the flesh of a worm. At other times, it was hard as a root. That's Similarly, um, there's a part in the book where Calliope has to go talk to Dr. Bauer, um, just a random doctor, um, to kind of figure out, like, her mom. So Tessie was all worried that she didn't get her period and stuff, like she wasn't maturing like a regular girl, because she's not. Um, but yeah, so Calliope says, there was a hot bubbling in my chest as if my heart were eating pop rocks. So that is a simile to describe how she was feeling about having to go see the doctor. She was really nervous because she has this protrusion. Is it protrusion or extrusion? I don't know. But that's why she was so nervous. Like her heart or her chest, it felt like it was bubbling. Like her butterflies, like how nervous she was. Like she thought it felt like, like she was eating pop rocks. So she was like all over the place and it was just like you know, that tingling feeling. So yeah, that's simile. Oh, is it recording? Mm -hmm. Point of view is next, y'all. Okay, so Cal slash Calliope um, is narrating the entire book. She talks about every single thing, like in her past, her family. She knows things that it's basically impossible for her to know. Um, the author uses I in place for Calliope and Cal. So the I is representing he and she. Yeah, it's it's kind of like a narrative point of view thing, your rhetoric used. It's more narrative than point of view, but we had to iterate that it's, he uses I mm -hmm. for he and she. Yeah, that's about it. The process of digestion begins as soon as food goes into the mouth. Enzymes in the saliva start to break up the food before it is swallowed. The major digestive organ, though, is the stomach, whose lining contains about 35 million tiny glands. Between them, the, the stomach glands produce some 2.5 liters of gastric juices every day, mostly in the form of hydrochloric acid. Okay, so that's metaphor. Simile? Next we'll do simile. Or do you want to do tone or simile? I'll talk about tone. Okay, you don't really need the book. I don't need the book. So, so you don't need the book. Okay, so throughout the book, middle sex, there's an overall tone that develops. It's kind of like a sardonic empathy where at times it's like really deep and personal and she feels empathy for people and then at other times it's just like... that thought I don't remember <clears throat> so it's deep and personal to Cal like she understands why things certain things happen that's where the empathy comes in and then there's the sardonic tone which implies that some of the book is funny um, so in the plot we talked about um, the obscure object um, and it's basically a symbol for what she was mm -hmm. to Calliope like she was always really attracted to the obscure object um she didn't really know why so it was like obscure like she didn't fully understand that she was actually attracted but she was um because they end up having sex and being intimate and all that stuff um but yeah she tries really really hard to try to get to know the obscure object and then they become really close friends and yeah, she just basically is a symbol for Calliope understanding, like, what she is and what she wants. Im Im imaginative? Sure. Okay. Go. So, next they talk about basically <laughs> cows and sheep. It's like, hey, hey, yeah. Yep. Character of the book. Uh, she grows a dick. It's not huge, it's too much. Oh, so she, she grows a toad. 
Are you saying? It's not show. Ready to go. Okay. What can you do with my hair? Probably. <laughs> A lot of damn people <laughs> keep walking behind us. <laughs> like I said. So like, I don't want to put examples in it. I didn't put an example. I guess. We're gonna use Clementine's time.